Welcome to Stargazing in the City. You are at the right place if you want to know more about space, stargazing as a hobby, or more complicated stuff such as astrophotography. This is my first full English uh, video, so please excuse me if I make any mistakes in language. Now, I really want to make all the Dutch movies available on my channel, also in English, but that will take some time. In a previous movie in Dutch, which you can find here if your Dutch is somewhat sufficient, you can take a look. I explained a little bit more about different types of telescopes that are available and their specific uses. In this video, I want to go into a little bit more detail um, into what all these different numbers mean that you often find with telescopes and eyepieces alike, like D values, capital F values, small f values, I relief, you name it. So let's start with the different numbers on a telescope. Okay, let's have a look at my refractor telescope. This is the label of it and you can recognize a lot of things. It says achromatic refractor telescope and then a bunch of numbers 102 dash 600 and small f dash 5.9 I think you probably know what a refractor telescope means. It's a telescope based on lenses and not mirrors, which would be called a reflector telescope. Achromatic means it's kind of the cheapest type of telescope, which indicates that it just uses two normal lenses. The 102-600 refers to the diameter of the lens in millimeters. 102, so that's 10 centimeters, and the focal length of the telescope, in this case 600 millimeters or 60 centimeters. If you divide 600 by 102, you end up with the 5.9, which is the last number, and that's kind of an indication of how fast or slow this telescope is. You might recognize the numbers if you ever dealt with camera objectives, for instance. I'm now shooting this video at f-3.5 and if I go to higher numbers you can notice that the image gets darker. We're at f over 5.6 right now. Now with camera lenses this kind of makes sense because it indicates the depth of view that you can reach. So different f values give different depth of views, meaning that the how far behind your focal plane you can still see a sharp image, which can be important for instance if you make images of moving objects or portraits. However, with telescopes we're always watching at infinity, so it doesn't really mean anything to have a depth of view. However, these numbers typically indicate how fast or slow a telescope gathers light. Specifically when you're doing astrophotography you want to gather a lot of light in the least amount of time. And in that case you need a fast telescope with small f ratios. So for instance this is almost f over 6. An f over 3 telescope would gather four times as much light in the same amount of time. So what about the eyepiece? Well, there are a couple of numbers important for eyepieces. The first one being the big one that you often find on the side of an eyepiece. And that's the focal length of the eyepiece. So basically it's the equivalent of the 600 on the telescope. The bigger this number, the smaller the magnification you would get in a given telescope. The way to calculate the magnification is by dividing the focal length of the telescope, so in this case 600, by the focal length of the eyepiece, in this case 40. So with the refractor that I just showed, this eyepiece would give a magnification of about 15 times, which is a very low number for a telescope. Another important number often mentioned and sometimes visible on the side of an eyepiece is the apparent field of view. Basically this indicates the amount of degrees on the sky that you can see with the telescope or an eyepiece. This particular eyepiece has an apparent field of view of 60 degrees. 
the actual field of view that you see through a telescope is that number divided by the magnification. So with the refractor shown in the beginning and this eyepiece, you would actually see 60 divided by the magnification, 15, or 4 degrees on the sky. That's a huge swath of sky. In fact, that's much wider than, for instance, the belt of Orion. In fact, it's 8 times the width of the full moon. And that basically would fit in the whole of the Andromeda ga galaxy easily. The third number of importance typically is called the eye relief. And that's also important because it indicates um, the distance above the lens that you can be with your eye to see the full sharp image. High eye relief numbers, meaning that you can be pretty far away from the lens to still see a nice image, um, is good for people wearing glasses. Because if you have glasses, you need more distance from the lens um, in able to see because, you know, your glasses need to fit in between. What is particularly nice about this series of eyepieces um, is that you can move the whole outside of the eyepiece up and down. Uh, once you find a comfortable distance your eyes need to be from the lens, you can basically, you know, twist the whole uh, outside up and rest your face or nose against the rim. I find that a very comfortable way of viewing. It does only work at low magnifications, otherwise vibrations become too severe. Another important point to note is that there are different sizes of focusers and diagonals. Um, this one would fit a 2 inch diagonal or focuser, this a 1 and a quarter inch. Now most focusers and di diagonals allowing for 2 inch have an adapter to allow one and a quarter inch eyepieces, but not the other way around. So you need to make sure that if you want to use two inch eyepieces, you actually have a two inch fo focuser on your telescope. Now I want to mention one final number, and that's called the exit pupil. Basically that indicates the diameter of the cone of light coming out of the lens of the eyepiece. For most um, cases that's a couple of millimeters, the way to determine it is actually to take the diameter of your lens or mirror and divide that by the magnification. So for instance in the previous example, my telescope is a hundred millimeter lens roughly and we had a 15 times magnification. So that would almost give a seven millimeter exit pupil. Now that's huge because at my age, and I'm 40, my pupil only dilates to about 7 mm in dark. So I might just fit in the full image with this the eyepiece in the refractor. Any bigger and I would just simply lose light. The opposite is also important. When you go to very high magnifications, the exit pupil becomes really small. And I tend to be bothered by floaters which are the kind of funny moving things you can sometimes see when you look at bright images like a wall uh, in sunlight. So I tend never to use eyepieces uh, in my telescopes with focal lengths below 6 millimeters because the magnification simply becomes too high for me to adequately use the eyepiece. Okay, what does all of this really mean in practice? Well, so suppose you're really interested in looking at dim, deep sky, but big objects like Andromeda Nebula, or the California Nebula, or Orion Nebula. Well, first of all, these are dim objects typically, so you need a rather big lens or mirror. But you don't need to magnify a whole lot, so a short focal length is fine. Two inch eyepieces tend to have really large apparent field of view, so you want to make sure that your telescope has a two inch focuser and that you buy long focal length eyepieces. If you're wearing glasses like me and especially if you have astigmatism in your eyes make sure that the eye relief of the eyepieces is big enough. So for instance a short focal length reflector of six or eight inches with a two inch focuser and some of these 
high focal length eyepieces of good quality with high eye relief would be excellent. If, however, you tend to look at the moon in high detail, if you want to see the most of planets like Mars's polar caps or the great red spot on Jupiter, well, you probably want to have a long focal, focal length telescope in combination with short focal length eyepieces. You don't really need the biggest lens or, tels uh, or mirror, but remember the maximum magnification is typically two times the diameter of millimeters. So this 10 centimeter telescope really only magnifies up to 200. Anything above really just adds noise. It doesn't really help to improve the image. It's important to know that these short focal length eyepieces tend to get really small lenses to look through and the eye, leaf, the eye relief diminishes rapidly. So you probably want to invest in you know, a little bit more expensive short focal length um, eyepieces to make sure that the eye relief is big enough if you want to wear glasses and that the lens doesn't get tiny, especially if you just begin observing. So for instance a Maxutov or Cassegrain telescope would be fine with some of the high quality short focal length eyepieces. Well, I hope everything was understandable, first of all. I secondly, I hope this was useful and maybe it helped you make a choice about getting a telescope. You can just leave your comments or questions below and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching.